Namaste children, I am Hari Prasad, your chemistry teacher. Children, today we will do the revision of HCl. What is HCl? Definitely it's an acid, a monobasic acid. That is, a monobasic acid is a one which produces, that is one molecule of an acid produces one H plus ion when dissolved in water. So this H plus in turn combines with water to produce hydronium ion. So an acid is a compound which produces a hydronium ion as the only positive ion when dissolved in water. So because of this ion, it is acidic in nature. That is, it turns moist blue litmus red, colorless phenophthalene to colorless orange color methyl orange to pink and pink color alkaline phenophthalene to colorless. Children, what is the type of bond present between H and Cl? Definitely, Cl is more electronegative when compared to H. It is polar covalent bond. Now, color, colorless, HCl is colorless, odor, it has a choking odor and taste. All acids are what? Sour to taste. Now, the question arises, molecular mass of HCl is 36.5. How do we got this one? Atomic weight of hydrogen is 1 and Cl is 35.5. If we add these two, I'll get 36.5. So the half of the molecular mass will give you what? Vapor density. Vapor density of HCl is 18.25 and vapor density of air is 14.4. Now common sense says that out of HCl and air, which is heavier, definitely HCl is heavier than when HCl enter, the air comes out. Then how HCl is collected? I hope you can see this arrow mark, right? Air comes out when HCl enters. So HCl is collected by what? Upward displacement of air. We all know that acids are highly soluble in water. Even HCl is highly soluble in water. One volume of H water can dissolve 452 volumes of what? Acid. That's why HCl is not collected over water. Now, next one. How to prepare HCl in the laboratory? We want sodium chloride and concentrated sulfuric acid. When you react these two at a temperature of what? Less than 200, you will get sodium bisulfate, which is a acid salt and our HCl. I hope you can see an arrow marks here. What is the meaning of this one? HCl fumes in moist air because it is highly soluble in water. Now the same reaction when you perform by, keep, by keeping the same reactants, that is when you just slightly increase the temperature more than 200, you will get sodium sulfate and our product HCl. But out of these two, which is the preferred reaction? Definitely the temperature less than 200. Why not the temperature more than 200? When you go at a higher temperature, the fuel is wasted, the apparatus may crack and in this higher temperature, sodium sulfate is formed, which forms a hard crust and it will stick to the glass and which is very difficult to remove. Okay, so this is the preferred reaction, the temperature less than 200. Now the question arises, why concentrated sulfuric acid is used for the laboratory preparation? Definitely there are two reasons. Sulfuric acid is non-volatile and it has a very high boiling point. Okay, why can't we use concentrated nitric acid? It's very simple. Nitric acid is volatile in nature. So volatile acid cannot displace one more volatile acid. Right? That's why concentrated nitric acid is not used. Obviously in the laboratory preparation of HCl, you want a drying agent. Which is the drying agent used? It is concentrated sulfuric acid. Why sulfuric acid is used? Because sulfuric acid is an acid, HCl is an acid, 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 no reaction. Okay, can I use calcium oxide? No, because it's basic in nature, it will react with HCl that is acid, that is it will form a chloride, calcium chloride. Then okay, can I use phosphorus pentoxide? No, even that is not used. That will also form phosphorus oxychloride. So the drying agent used is concentrated sulfuric acid and not used is 
calcium oxide and phosphorus pentoxide. Now the question arises, what is the difference between hydrogen chloride and hydrochloric acid? Now before we proceed this, proceed with this one, how do you confirm that this is HCl? We all know that a glass rod dipped in ammonia, when you bring it near the mouth of the glass jar, where are you collecting HCl? Then if it is HCl, you will observe a dense white fumes that indicates the formation of what? Ammonium chloride. So this proves that the gas what you are collecting is nothing but what children? HCl. Now, hydrogen chloride is a gas. When you dissolve this gas in water, that is called as hydrochloric acid. Now, out of hydrogen chloride and hydrochloric acid, which will turn blue litmus red? Definitely hydrochloric acid. Why not hydrogen chloride? Hydrogen chloride does not have a moisture in it. So you mean to say that hydrochloric acid will turn blue litmus red, then hydrogen chloride will turn moist blue litmus red. Right? Now children, how do you confirm, how do you convert this one? It's very simple. We dissolve the gas in water by using a special funnel arrangement, right? So what is the use of special funnel arrangement? We can convert the gas to what? Acid. What are the advantages of funnel arrangement? There are two advantages. This funnel arrangement, it provides, that is, it prevents or minimizes back suction and it provides a large surface area for the absorption of gas. Now, from that time we are telling that HCl is an acid, it's an acid. How do you prove that it's an HCl is an acid and how do you prove that it is highly soluble in water? For that, we do an experiment called as what? Fountain experiment. In fountain experiment, we take a blue litmus solution which turns into red color. The change in color indicates that blue to red indicates that it is acidic in nature. So this movement of this blue litmus and comes out as a fountain. So that proves that our HCl is what? Highly soluble in water. Now, next one. Sir, what are the properties of all dilute acids? Definitely, all dilute acids, in general, when they react with active metal, active metal is the one which is placed above what? Hydrogen in the activity series. With active metal, they produce hydrogen, Right, which can be confirmed by what? It burns with a what? Pops on, right? And when you treat a dilute acid with a base, it forms salt in water. Dilute acids with metal carbonates or bicarbonates, it is going to produce a gas that turns lime water milky. Definitely you are right, it is carbon dioxide. We'll get only carbon dioxide. No, you'll get salt, water and carbon dioxide. With metal sulfides and bisulfides, you will get one more gas that also turns lime water milky. Which one is that? Yes, sulfur dioxide. And will you get only sulfur dioxide? No, salt, water and sulfur dioxide. Now, carbon dioxide and sulfur dioxide both are acidic in nature. Both will turn lime water what? Milky. Then how will you distinguish these two? We have a small way of doing that. What is that? Only sulfur dioxide can turn pink color K in a to what? Colorless. And orange K2Cr2O7 to what? Green. Whereas carbon dioxide does not react. Right? It does not bring about the color changes. Then dilute acids with metal sulfides will produce a rotten neck smelling gas. What is that? H2S. How do you confirm that it is H2S? Definitely, it turns, that is H2S turns lead acetate paper silvery black. That silvery black compound is nothing but what? PBS. Then, when you treat dilute HCl with lead nitrate, you will get a white precipitate of what? 
PbCl2, which is soluble in hot water and insoluble in cold water. Now, children, what are the tests that we do to prove that it is HCl? And one more thing, suppose if they ask you, how will you prove that HCl contains chlorine and HCl contains hydrogen? Definitely, I will treat acid with active metal, I will get hydrogen, HCl contains hydrogen. Definitely. What I do is that when I treat HCl concentrated with oxidizing agent like MnO2, I will get a greenish yellow color what? Chlorine gas. This proves that HCl contains what? Chlorine. Right? So this is also one of the tests. Then the most important test for HCl is silver nitrate test. Okay? Silver nitrate test is a confirmatory test for HCl. How you can confirm that it is HCl by making use of silver nitrate? Silver nitrate with HCl, right? You will observe the formation of a curdy white precipitate of what? AgCl, which is insoluble in nitric acid. So then uh, AgCl, it is soluble in what? Is it soluble in water? No. Then silver chloride is soluble in what? This curdy white precipitate is soluble in excess of liquor ammonia, that is ammonium hydroxide, right? And the product what you are going to get is what? Diamine, silver chloride and water. Now children, one simple question. I will give you HCl and I will give you nitric acid. How will you distinguish these two? Very simple, add silver nitrate to both. When you add silver nitrate to both, with HCl, right? Silver nitrate will give you what? Yes, you are right. Curdy white precipitate. With HNO3, no reaction. So, who distinguished HCl and HNO3? It is silver nitrate. Now, children, we all know that gold is a noble metal. It does not react with anything. But it reacts with nascent chlorine. Now, the question arises. Who can produce nascent chlorine? Definitely HCl can produce nascent chlorine. But who is that fellow that is reacting with HCl to produce nascent chlorine? That fellow is nitric acid who is a strong oxidizing agent. What I am trying to say is that, see, <coughs> nitric acid which is a strong oxidizing agent, it oxidizes HCl to produce what? Nascent chlorine. So this nascent chlorine reacts with noble metals like what? Gold and platinum. So the mixture of nitric acid and concentrated nitric acid and concentrated HCl in 1 is to 3 ratio, we call it as what regia? Aqua regia. Okay, children, I think these are the some of the important things for your board exam. I hope this has helped you. Thank you children. Namaste everybody.